Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I was so proud of myself because I was ready earlier than I thought. I hit the button and I had done something wrong. So it was going to the wrong place. Anyways, welcome everyone. It's Wednesday, October 27th at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm broadcasting to you live. I'm peeking in at the comments that are rolling in. And it looks like we have lots of people joining us today, which is always fun. Um, Trisha, I saw your comment come through. I'm not sure if you realize this, but I think you're on your um, other account because your name isn't showing up the same way. Um, just thought I'd point that out in case you didn't realize it. But Trisha Josephs is my moderator. She is the one who you will soon recognize. Her name will pop up with the wrench symbol next to her name. And um, she's the person who will answer questions, guide you to the right place. Um, that sort of thing. She's reading through the comments while the live is happening so she can help me out because it's hard for me to do that. We are going to share a new card, a new fun fold card today, new to me. Um, I've done something similar in the past, but this one, the measurements are slightly different. Um, I'm very excited because this idea was actually shared with me by someone who sent me a card. Her name is Jean. Jean Perrin. I think that's how you say your last name. She sent me a, a thank you card and um, mentioned that she's not on Pinterest, she's not out there searching out card ideas and came up with this on her own. So congratulations, Jean. I'm going to demonstrate your fun fold card. And along with that, I'm going to also show, with, uh, show you uh, another fun idea that I came across. It's like an origami thing and it holds your phone. It folds flat and so for this card, and this project to go together, they need to fold flat. And we need lots of fun gift ideas that we can send in the mail because the holidays are coming and I know there's a lot of product shipping issues lately um, with the COVID pandemic related situations. And so um, this is just a fun little gift to give sort of like a teenager or a young adult because they go out and about and it's nice for them to have a little origami pop-up phone stand that they can bring with them. So on that note, I think we're all here here. Um, <laughs> there she is. Okay, awesome. <laughs> she switched over. Great. And I'm going to be using the stamp set called Heartfelt Wishes. It is a really nice stamp set in that it um, goes with a lot of different um, a lot of different kinds of projects that you could make. It's got the outside and the inside sentiments to it. And we're going to use that along with a couple different designer paper packs of paper. So I think... I think I did my introduction. I think we're good to go. If you want to tag Trisha in a comment, let's say she didn't catch your question or something like that, you can actually start typing her name um, with the at sign before it. So you put an A and then the circle around it, that sign, A with a circle, and then start typing T-R-I-C-I-A and it will come up with her name and you can just grab her name, like click on it, and it will tag her in the post that she sees your comment a little bit better. Uh, okay, let's move over to the computer because um, along with commenting during the live, you get entered into a prize drawing and I just want to encourage you all to comment because I do read through the comments uh, probably 90, 95% of the time. There's always a video here and there where it's really busy at home and I miss reading all of them, but um, I try to read them following the live and I have grab some screenshots of comments from the last time we were live and I'm going to now show those to you. So let me set up my computer, there we go. And I think I might be on the w in the way of the last comment. It's not too bad. Okay, so we had some first timers with us. Um, welcome to all the first timers. It was al It's always fun to read through um, comments where someone's saying, oh my gosh, I'm live for the first time. It's a fun experience to be live on YouTube or live on any video. Um, so welcome to the first timers and um, thanks for shouting out that you were new to the video. We have people from Washington, Alabama, Russia, Maui, um, Alaska. I love reading. I love reading where you're from. It's fun to reach out to the whole world with the internet the way it is, right? At the very top on the right, you can see people also were mentioning what was going on in their world while they were watching live. Um, rainy weather was happening a couple weeks ago in Fort Worth, Texas. Thanks, Jane, for letting us know. Um, let's see. <laughs> Um, having tea and working on dental paperwork <laughs> and then competing with your cat 
playing with birds, very fun. Um, then we had some questions and some comments, some comments that made me giggle. I love reading your comments. Um, Shirley had mentioned that you're never really a beginning crafter because once you start, you're hooked. Um, and then we had uh, the abstract thinking comment. <laughs> I love this. Um, when is it gonna kick in? I'm 62, I'm so sorry. Uh, and I wanna know how to pronounce your name. Is it, and and they, oh, shoot, I'm gonna botch it up. Aniki, Aniki? I'm not sure how to say your first name. So if you're live today, will you just throw that into the comments? Let me know how to pronounce your name. Um, Marty, uh, crafting with the replay. So I'd asked the question, how many of you craft along with me? And um, some of you do, but most of you said you watched the replay, which makes sense. Um, Gwen was asking about my die pocket holders. I'm guessing that she meant the holders that hold my magnetic sheets. And so anytime I have a video where I'm sharing dies, um, you know, metal dies or whatever, I do have a link in the description of my video. So you can check that video from two weeks ago, the last one I did, and you'll see in there the description sharing the link to Stampin' Storage, which is the place that I get a lot of my, um, my products. And then we had, oh yes, measurements are always listed in my blog too. So whenever you see a live, you can visit my blog when it goes live shortly after. The link is always in the description of the video. You can go there and you'll see the list of the measurements there along with photos and supply lists. And also the video will be linked in there too. And then Tammy, um, let's see here. Yes, you can certainly sign up in my team. Um, in fact, any US resident can sign up and under any US demonstrator, Canadian under Canadian, German under German. So I hope that makes sense. So um, if you're in a certain um, area of the world and Stampin' Up! is there, you can choose any demonstrator in that, in that region. So. Um, and I look forward to getting to know you, Tammy. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go to the desktop and I'm gonna share with you some, I'm actually gonna share with you the finished card. Um, let me show you Jean's first. I love Jean's, cause Jean had um, used some stiffer type of designer paper in her card. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit here. So this is Jean's card and it's very pretty as you can tell she used some fun sponging on some emboss uh, so it's an emboss resist kind of technique because this paper was white paper with white embossing on it and it's a, a paper that we um carried a, a long time ago it was a one-sided paper but also stiffer like cardstock so it did make a nice sturdy card the cards that i'm going to share today are a little more flimsy because i'm i did i just had to give in to designer paper um, but the designer paper that we mainly have is double-sided and it's a little bit thinner let me show you the inside here so then she has a couple pockets she's got a pocket like this and she's got a pocket here and um, so it's a double pocket card very fun and thank you again jean so let's get started on the one that I'm going to demonstrate. So I'm going to de demonstrate this one here and it's using the um, elegant. Oh, you know what? I should show you. Ha! He, he, he. I'm going to move over here for just a, just a quick second here. There we go. I'm going to show you the supplies and measurement list, which you'll be able to access also in my blog post. So when this blog um, or when this video goes live at 1215, central time so in a little over an hour you'll be able to um, click on that link for the blog and you can click on the pdf which will download this exact sheet it'll look just like this if you'd rather you can take a screenshot right now though and um, then you'll have the the measurements right away and you can craft along with me if you'd like so you can see we're going to be using um, lots of different types of designer papers because we're going to be doing three different projects. I'm going to do two cards and one phone holder. So I'm getting that paper ready so I can share it with you in just a second. I have the imperial, which is inches measurements, and I have the metric, which is centimeter measurements um, over in the middle and to the right there. You can see that there's not a whole lot of supplies for this, but we're going to be doing some cutting of the main sheet and it's going to give us a couple extra pieces when we do the cutting. 
I am using Jean's measurements, although I do have another card that I'm working on, um, and that's using a slightly different angled cut. So you can really angle your cut however you want, and you'll see that in a minute. Um, wonderful snowflakes. What else? Whimsy and wonder paper. Simply elegant paper. And so let me share that with you right now. Here we go, and I'm gonna zoom out just a tad because we're really close to this paper. So this is the Simply Elegant paper. I do have this sheet also, which is um, the other, the, the, the sixth design, because you actually get six different double-sided designs, two of each, in most of our packs of designer paper. You can see that this is a specialty paper. It's got a foil um, type of um, coating on you know, one side and then the other side. We have more of a neutral. There's white, vanilla, gray, and black. Um, the neutral design on this side is this design here. And I'm not showing you the full sheet because we're gonna cut into it and it's off to the right right now. So we're gonna use the Simply Elegant paper in our first card. And as I pull that in, you're gonna see that I have um, some sections here that I've kept on top of my sheet because I wanna make sure I don't lose my place. Oh yes, my pink. Thanks, Anne, for pointing that out. So the card and the phone holder are, um, they kind of coordinate together. And, and I don't know, I just wanted to wear my bright pink to kind of coordinate with that card because I like to coordinate with my projects. <laughs> I'm glad you like, it's a jacket though, but it's the only bright pink I had. <laughs> All right, so here we have this little strip. It's about one inch. And then we have this piece, which was cut out of this section, as you can see here. So I've made one card, I can make another card, um, and then I had a strip. So you can get two cards from one full sheet. This is the card that I made with that section. Does that make sense now? So all those little sections. Now, when you cut your strip, your extra strip up, so you've cut your two cards and then your extra strip, you have this scrap to work with for cutting out extra things. So, and you can cut however you want, but I like to make sure that my cards are kind of duplicates of each other. So I'm gonna cut out one more strip here to use that. I'm not so worried about this one here, but I know that I have the exact same flowers on that little strip there, so I wanna make sure I'm grabbing that. And so here we go. This piece is 12 inches by five and a half, okay? This card will fit into our medium size um, envelopes. And because I'm using Very Vanilla as the neutral, I've pulled in the Very Vanilla medium envelopes. We carry those in clear, white, and vanilla. We have that size envelope, so. All right, so now we're gonna take and score this. Someone had just shared some sad news. Oh boy, I'll have to go back and read the comments. Um, my prayers are going out to you too. I'm not sure who's having some issues, but um, I will read later and put you in my prayers. So for our designer paper, we are gonna score, and we are gonna score at three and a half. Um, and I'm doing the scores in, in order um, so that if you have a designer paper that has a direction to it, you can have the up going this way and the down going this way, and it'll come out all okay if you score in um, in order of these measurements. So three and a half and seven and three quarters. Here's the three and a half inch mark. And then the seven and three quarters you will get if you extend the arm of your trimmer. So we're just gonna move to the seven and three quarter inch mark. That'll give us a section that is four and a quarter inches wide here and four and a quarter inches wide here, and of course, three and a quarter inches wide there. And then you just fold it all over onto itself. So now you can see why you would do that score line first, because this is still the upright position here. So we have our base ready to go. And then I've also got some other pieces that we'll need for our card. We're gonna need an inside layer. And this layer here is our very vanilla that is three and a quarter by four and a half. Um, you can have a larger layer, but we're gonna actually stick this into our pocket. So we need it to be a little bit smaller. We need our sentiment layer, um, our layer that's gonna go underneath that, 
and then another piece that's going to go on the front. And you can see from the uh, dimensions that they're going to coordinate with the stamp set that I'm using, but you could really adjust any of your measurements to coordinate with whatever. So these are all just little decorative pieces that are going to get, um, you know, embellishing the, it's going to embellish the front of the card. Um, what else do I want to mention before we move on? I think that's it. Let's bring in our paper snips. So our paper snips is our scissors and we're going to cut out some flowers. So what I'm looking for along here is some flowers that can appear to be coming out from underneath our sentiment. So I'm going to zoom in just a bit here and I'm just going to trim around. Now because we have a black background and it's going to be placed against the black background of the card, I'm not too worried about cutting precisely when I do this. So I came really close to one flower and I just cut super close between the two, but you couldn't really tell that it was a real close cut unless it was placed against white paper or another color that's a little brighter. And then you can see that I really like possibly cut off part of a flower there. Then I need a, a leaf. So I'm just gonna pull in this leaf here because um, the one that I could have kept attached to it actually got cut off on the side there. And then I have another flower that uh, I believe came from right here. So we're gonna grab that one. Now on my other card, I used a strip, a leftover strip for the decoration. You can really do whatever you want. This is just two different ways to do it using this section of your designer paper that's left over or to use the section of the designer paper that is going to get cut off at an angle. So there we go. And you can see I didn't cut real precisely, but again, it's going to be placed against black cardstock. So it'll sort of like blend in. So let's go ahead and add our layer to the front. Oh, you know what? Let's cut this first. Let's make that angle cut because then we don't have to worry about layers getting stuck in our trimmer. So for this little pocket here, we have a measurement that goes up one and a quarter inches. And so you're gonna mark it and you can mark it on either side of the paper, whatever is easiest to see. So we can use our grid paper and we can just count up one, two, three, four, plus another one. And that brings us to one and a quarter inches. Our grid paper has little quarter, quarter, quarter inch squares on it. So we'll line that up, that little mark in our trimmer with the top of this score line here. We'll just line those up in the channel of our trimmer, use our cutting blade and slice through. Let's grab this piece now and let's grab a post-it note or a sticky note to hang on to our, our paper with. And we're going to bring this to the 3 8 inch mark. So um, this Cutting this off here gives us the same dimensions that Jean had. Plus, if you look at this, it's not going to fit in our card very well. It's, it's going to get stuck in that corner there if we don't trim off a little bit of extra um, paper there. So we're going to line that mark up and that mark up down here because you actually have your inches in two separate spots. We're just going to line those up like that. You can also check by um, making sure that everything's correct by looking to see if this edge here, oops, it keeps moving on me. If this edge here is parallel to this line right here, we'll just place it down and slice it. And now we've got a three eighths of an inch little strip here that we could use on the card, but I'm not going to. Now our pocket is the correct size. Okay. All right, let's move this aside and get this out of the way. So you can add your pocket in a couple different ways. For this demonstration, I'm going to use one of our really sturdy narrow tape tape pieces. This is called our tear and tape adhesive, and it's uh, I I love it for 3D projects. Um, it's a nice strong adhesive and you want to go really close to the edge. In fact, you could even go all the way to the edge and then trim off, which I probably could have done over here. But the nice thing about this tape is that you can 
Um, you can get, um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I got distracted. The nice thing about this tape is, you guys finish the sentence, all right? Oh my goodness, Rachel. Okay, then you just set it down in the corner about an eighth of an inch away. I don't know where my mind just left. It just left, you guys. Is that old age? I don't know. You, you can tear it. Is that what I was going to say? The nice thing about this tape is you can tear it. I think that's what I was going to say. Okay, so we tore it. Yes, and you can see both sides of the designer paper with this type of card. It really shows off our beautiful papers that Stampin' Up! has when you have a card like this. Again, it's a little bit thinner, but when you add cardstock layers, um, to maybe you want to do like a front design or something, or you put um, a full quarter sheet in, inside too, you could do that instead and just have this side showing with the designer paper, or you could put a, another section of designer paper in there to reinforce it. Um, but anyways, it, it can toughen up the card a bit, but this card is going to hold some stuff. So an advantage to use in designer paper is that if you want to save on postage and you put your, well, a gift card, probably not, that, that's not a good idea because gift cards are stiff and they have to be a non, non-machinable stamp. But if you put money in there, let's say you put cashola in your pocket, okay, and then you send it through the mail, it's nice and thin and it's going to go right through with just one stamp, a one ounce stamp. Okay, this pocket here is removable. So the nice, th or this little insert is removable. So the nice thing about that is that you can take and write um, a long letter. Um, it can be a double-sided little thank you note. We're gonna stamp our heartfelt wishes. Our image from the, um, <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. What does that say? Heartfelt wishes. Oh yeah, I put the stamp on the wrong pile. I'm gonna have to clean that off. Okay, this is our heartfelt wishes sentiment, which is the name of the stamp set. Pretty darn cool. So that's gonna go inside the pocket. We're gonna put our gift card in the other one, or cash, or whatever. Um, seeds, tea, you know, could be whatever. And then to decorate the front, we're gonna go ahead and add this with just seal adhesive right on the front side here. Get our tape going. Center that as best you can. We're going to take and stamp this piece. Yeah, <laughs> I had them sitting. I had them sitting on the wrong ink pads over here. Stamp that in the center like that. And it's okay if it goes off the edge as long as you have um, your grid paper, right? We're gonna place that inside our smaller piece of black. So this is, the vanilla is seven eighths of an inch tall by three and a quarter. And the black is um, one inch tall by, by three and three eighths. This is gonna go up on dimensionals. Grab our dimensionals. Now if you have the black dimensionals, you could use those. That's kind of fun. I didn't list that in the supplies, but we do have black dimensionals. So they kind of hide in case somebody's looking over your card at an angle and studying it really hard, right? So that can get centered like that. And then these guys can all just get a little bit of, I don't know, you can try to get the seal on there or you can bring in something like the multi-purpose liquid glue. This is a fresh new bottle, so it's gonna be a little bit um, thick coming out here, so I have to be pretty careful. I may have to blot off some of that. We'll see. Tuck this one right underneath like that. Oops. Yep. I had too much glue. <laughs> too much glue, Rachel. There. And then we can put this one up top. That is the advantage to having a glue bottle that is a little more used is you can control the glue coming out a little bit better. And this one's just gonna get tucked underneath in that area like that. Should have blotted that one too. 
can come in with an adhesive eraser afterwards when it's dry and get those stickies out of there. I love metallic pearls. Metallic pearls are one of those um, one of those embellishments that actually kind of take on the color of your um, of your cardstock, whatever cardstock you're using. It kind of picks that up. So when when we do the second card, you're going to think, oh my gosh, those look like purple or bluish pearls, but we're actually using the silver on them. So I'm going to pull out both my gold and silver metallic pearls. So you get a package that includes um, a little of each, and we're just going to start adding them. And I'm going to use my newer tool for this because it's easier. Oops, as long as it's out of the package. Two, three, four. See, it's really easy to add this way. Five. Ta-da! <laughs> so there is that finished card. Very quick to make. Very easy to give a gift. And um, let's move on to the next one. So the next one, I'm going to be using the Whimsy and Wonder designer paper. And we're going to use this sheet here. Let me show you all six designs. We're going to move the black ink out of the way, though. All right. So there's our ornament. Um, this is a directional paper, by the way. So we have to really make sure that we're scoring the right way. Oops. Spread them all out here. There we go. There's our fun designs. Also a specialty paper. As you can see, we have... Um, six designs here, all with kind of an iridescent foiling to them. And on the back side, we have more subtle designs, although this one's kind of nice and loud, isn't it? <laughs> so there's our Whimsy and Wonder paper. We're going to score this. Oh, actually, we need to trim it down just a little bit more because it is a little taller than it was six and a half inches instead of five and a half. There we go. Now we're going to score at three and a quarter and at seven and what was it? Gosh, did I get this wrong? It was three and a half, Rachel. Three and a half. Why did I think three and a quarter? And then seven and three quarters. You got to have some mess ups in every video. Yeah, no one's going to notice. It's just me. Kind of an, a nice little accent embossed line there now, right? So there's our card, and scoring in that order will give you your card to look upright. And look at we have a little reindeer right in the center there. Although he's going to get covered up, he or she. Sorry about that. These are the um, basic white envelopes. So again, you can you can see that we have them in two different. Uh, neutral tones, we also have the clear envelopes, which you can mail, but I believe it requires extra postage. <clears throat> Let's grab in our layers, and we'll stamp those real quickly, and we'll do that now. We're going to use Misty Moonlight ink. Our Misty Moonlight ink <clears throat> is a firm foam pad, so when you ink up a stamp on a pad like this, you want to tap a little bit lighter. In fact, you don't even need to tap. You can just set it down on there, and it'll pick up the ink. Unlike our Tuxedo Black, which I just used, you can kind of pound your, your stamp into it. So we're going to stamp this on our little white strip. All the measurements are the same for this card except for the um, inside piece. The inside piece is slightly larger. This one is four inches by five and a quarter. So let's stamp that inside piece and then we'll put our ink pad away. Um, I'm going to stamp this down a little bit because um, I actually stamped it after I added some angled paper because this is going to be stuck on the inside, all right? This is going to be one that is um, glued down to the inside to kind of reinforce the strength of the card. So we can do that right now. We'll just take our seal adhesive and add a little in each corner and that's going to go in the center of this first section back here like that we're going to actually we should have trimmed that 
sorry. Let's measure again. Let's grab our pencil and measure up five little squares. One, two, three, four, five. Let's mark it there. And if it's not exactly five squares up or one and a quarter inches, your card will still be, um, still have a similar look to it. So don't worry too much if you don't get it exact. This is one of those cards, thankfully, that exact measurements don't matter too much. So there's our angled piece. Now for this piece, I'm going to have it come over into this corner. Again, we're going to trim off a little bit. So we're going to grab our post-it note, our post-it note with glue on it. Our post-it note has glue on it, Rachel, so be careful. We're lining this up again with the 3 8 inch mark. Stick it down to help hold it in place. And why did I choose to put this triangular piece up top instead? Because of the directional paper. If I put it this way, all my ornaments are going to look like they're laying down. So that's when I said to myself, oh, I'm going to alter Jean's idea just a tad. And we're going to go ahead and add this to the tippy top of the card instead as just a little fun accent that kind of kind of makes the inside of the card flow a little bit. So I'm not going to press this down all the way yet. In fact, let's just stick something under there because I'm going to bring in something called Wonderful Snowflakes. Our Wonderful Snowflakes look like this. They have an iridescent sheen to them, um, kind of like on white paper. And actually, I have a sheet. I need another one anyways. Let's pull, just pull one out. So they're separated by tissue paper to help protect them. There's the tissue paper right here. Okay. And then, oops. And then I've got one here, but we're going to need one and a half of them for each card. So I'm going to pull this out and give you a little tip on the leftovers. When you pull your die cut pieces out of a sheet like this, make sure that you're really careful, especially when you have an intricate design like that. You don't want to break it. So all of this is usable. Um, one of my um, friends and teammates, uh, Amanda, she had done a swap card using the leftovers of this and just took and die cut some extra snowflakes that were smaller. So that was really fun to see. Use your imagination. What can you do with it, right? So if we take and cut just on the halfway mark, and this line of a halfway mark is a little bit shorter than the other, than the other line, you know, if I was going to go this way. So I've cut it in half, and now we're just going to stick it under there. And to do that, I think I'm going to add one little glue dot underneath the center of our snowflake. Oh, there's, okay, there's the iridescent side. Here's the dull side. You can color the dull side. You can ink it up and have it be a totally different color. Like if you wanted to, you could make it match your jacket and have pink snowflakes. But I think that looks pretty fun. For this pocket here, I'm going to use the, the glue because the glue can make an even thinner line if we're super careful. Rachel, let's just get a little scrap note here. So you can throw it away and not have it affect the rest of your project. Okay, let's see if I can do a thin line with this new bottle of glue. That's pretty good. I did it, except for the beginning part. Now we can fold it over and hold it down for just a few seconds. And that's going to give us an even deeper pocket. <laughs> Plus, as someone mentioned in either the last video or the one before, Using the two-way glue as um, oh, it's on the floor. Um, using the two-way glue as a pocket adhesive allows you to have um, a, a nice solid. Um, I guess how would I describe this? When you're sticking something in, it's not going to get caught on the edges of the tape, um, like you know if we use the two the the tear and tape. Although this glue does dry tacky, so it's going to have a little tackiness to it. You could use the fine tip glue if you'd like to, but there's a little tip for you. Okay, so now we've got the inside of our card. I believe the inside is pretty much done. Yes. Now we're going to do the outside. I'm keeping this one more of a surprise to you, although you may have seen, you may have seen it because 
when I do my videos, when I advertise that I'm going to be having a video coming up, I have a sneak peek picture. And this one showed a lot of this card. So hopefully um, you're kind of able to follow along with it. So now we have another snowflake here and we're going to stick that onto the back side of this piece. So let's layer these up. We're gonna do this piece onto here. And then we're going to put just a little thin line of adhesive to pick this up. And let's just kind of put it over something dark here. We're gonna come down on top of it so it looks pretty centered. You can flip it over. And if it looks like you have the same distance away from each edge, you can be satisfied with it. I'm not completely satisfied. In fact, it loosened up on me. There. Now I can stick it down really hard. So this will allow the snowflake to have kind of a dimension to it too. When it's on your card, it's not going to be flat to the background surface. It's going to be popped up along with this. Before we stick that down onto the Misty Moonlight square though, um, we are going to do a little bit of decoration onto that square with the leftover strip. I stuck it back here. With this leftover strip. And we don't want too many loud ornament design pieces everywhere on the card. I mean, this is going to be plenty. And when we cover it up, you know, we don't want to be adding more and more and more, right? So we're going to use the flip side of it. So we're going to do that tone on tone look that we had with the last card. And we're just going to add this as kind of, you know, when you wrap a present and you have kind of like a diagonal ribbon going on it. So we're just going to place this piece kind of in the mid, well, maybe a little bit past the middle. We're gonna go like that and stick it down, trim off any excess. And then we're gonna take and do the same thing to the opposite side. Let's see, how did I do that now? Um, I think what I did is I laid it on my grid paper and I counted how many squares I have. Oh, you know what? I didn't count how many squares because the angle is slightly different. It's not a square angle. So you're going to have to just kind of eyeball. And is that how I did it? Oh, Rachel. I know what I did now. I measured. <laughs> We're just going to eyeball it though. But yes, you can measure. So you can take your ruler and you can go around and say, okay, if this one is one and a quarter -ish inches away, then this one should be one and a quarter inches away, if that makes sense. If you want to be exact, but you know what? It's such a small little space and it's not going to be noticed too much because it's more subtle. It's going to be behind everything. So now we can place that down with some seal adhesive into the center of our card. Take off the backings on here. Okay, so you know again with shipping right now everyone's being encouraged to get any of their holiday gifts at this time. Um, so make sure that you're reaching out to your friends and family or whatever, whoever you exchange gifts with and and letting them know and you know that sort of thing because don't want to have your your presence be late right start working on that now um sorry i'm looking over at my other card i'm trying to copy it and make sure i have it somewhat the same so on that note if shopping stresses you out and you're more of a last minute person again making a card that can hold a gift card or a gift would be kind of cool so there's that finished card there's the inside of that card we're now going to make this gift that gift is a piece of origami and it's a simplified version of the one that I learned but I didn't want to overwhelm anybody plus there's not the ideal paper from Stampin' Up to make this project um, if we had more of a, a printer paper kind of thickness um, that would be ideal so let me show you the process that I went through to try to figure out which one to show you so I started out with um, just printer paper, copy paper, typing paper, which is what we used to call it. And this is the way it opens up and it sits like this. And then you put your phone in your stand, right? You even have a little place for nuts or M&Ms or Skittles. 
<laughs> um, you can even stand it up this way. It's a super sturdy um, little holder because of the way that the fold is situated. So I learned this from Easy Origami, a website that you can find on YouTube. I have the link in the description of the video if you want to learn this exact one. Um, but I actually simplified mine because of, again, our papers that we have at Stampin' Up. This is a larger version. Uh, I did it with 12 by 12 paper. This is our host only paper. It's done with 12 by 12 though. And so it's super large. I don't think that you want to do a phone holder this big unless you're looking for an iPad holder. This would hold an iPad. I mean, look at, I'm trying to bash into the backside and it will not move. It's a pretty strong holder. The difference in sizes, as you can see here, this was made by eight with eight by eight paper. This was made with 12 by 12. It is just over a quarter of an inch or just under three eighths of an inch. So it's five sixteenths of an inch difference that will vary depending on how many inches you add to your paper, your square paper. So a 10 by 10 piece of paper would be, of course, ha halfway in between here. So if you don't like this size, you want something smaller or larger, now you can do the math if you want. When I did that designer paper, even in the 12 by 12 design size though, it was really hard to do this portion of the fold, this right in here, okay? Because it requires a little bit more manipulation. It's, it's just, it's hard. Um, I tried, I tried a thinner paper. This is our paper that is our shimmer vellum. And you can see it got ripped and it was super hard to do. I did this one yesterday thinking I would find something ideal. Um, but again, super hard to fold. But I am gonna do a simpler version with our vellum because the vellum just has a really nice pretty look to it. So these are the colors that you get with the shimmer vellum. They're the new in colors, the polished pink, evening evergreen, uh, no, evening evergreen, soft succulent is the lighter green, pale papaya and fresh freesia. So we're going to pull in this color, but we're gonna do the simplified version. I haven't even shared with you the simplified version yet. Here's one other um, paper. This is the soft succulent, but it's in a new paper in our Eden's Garden, Eden, Eden's Garden collection that you can get um, starting early November. Uh, sorry, let me open it up. But it is super flimsy. It's so flimsy that it didn't hold the phone. As you can see, it's kind of coming apart in the back there. So our thinner paper didn't work, but it did work in the revised version. Here we go. All right. So we're going to grab our vellum and you could even do this revised version in um, designer paper because you don't have to do that intricate fold. We're going to grab our arm on our trimmer and cut it at eight inches. There we go. And again at eight inches. This would be a fun gift again, like I said, for a young adult or a teenager. And now you just need your bone folder as an extra tool. Pull that in, make sure that's ready. Okay. Whatever design you want on the outside, you're gonna have that showing right now on the outside. So you're gonna fold it in half, edge to edge. And with origami, unlike the angled um, two-pocket card that we just shared, you want to be pretty exact with your measurements. So come in, do your fold first with your fingers and then crease with the bone folder. When I open this up, you're gonna see that Vellum really holds its folds pretty well. Plus on the flip side, you can see the lines. So I think this is, this will be a fun one to demonstrate on because you'll be able to see all the score lines real easily. Now you're gonna open it up so that you're seeing the inside and you're gonna go edge to middle in both, both sides here, edge to middle. And see how it's keeping its fold real easily? That actually helps because you can bring it right up to where it starts to go upwards, you know, where it starts to form a little mountain. You can use that as a guide. There we go. So there's our fold so far. We did a fold to the middle and then we did two folds 
um, bringing the edges to the middle so that we have this separated into four equal parts, right? Now we're gonna flip this over. So the opening part is gonna be on the back side. And we're gonna have this showing, the mountain little part of that fold, and we're gonna fold this way now. Just kind of bring that paper out so that you can fold it down carefully, edge to edge, like this and use your bone folder to help crease. We're now gonna do angle folds. So if you think about the four corners of your square that's showing here, we're gonna do a diagonal fold like this, and we're gonna do a diagonal fold like this, okay? So I'm just gonna situate it so it's easier for me to hold and bring that in like that. Open it up. Bring it in like that. Because we had that other example where the vellum did have a tear in it, you want to be really super careful with your vellum as you fold it. You know, don't overfold, don't fold in both directions if you can help it. And there is a fold where I have to kind of fold in both directions in this, but um, but we just have to deal with that. <laughs> So there we go, we have our two angled folds, diagonal folds there. These are gonna wanna stay flipped back, just you know, bring them flat down again. Now we open it up so that we see this side where it opens, okay? And you're going to work with one side at a time. So this side is, we're gonna do the same thing from this side to this side to do this simple fold. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up one half you're going to imagine this little V. I love the way the guy on Easy Origami described it. You're going to imagine this V here, and we're going to bring in, this is where the fold is going to go opposite itself. You're going to bring this edge over to meet this edge on the V. So we're going to fold it like that, and we're going to tuck it, and, oops, sorry, hang on. You're going to fold it the other way. How did I do that now? Shoot. Okay, yeah, it was like that, I think. Oh, Rachel. Did we open it up? No, I think it's just like that. Okay, so you go like that, and then you bring it down like so. Is that right? Shoot, now I don't know. Hang on, let me just experiment. Yeah, that's it. So there we go, like that. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing to the other side. No, this might not be right. Oh my gosh, Rachel, you've done a zillion of these. Okay, so open it up. This is supposed to be smooth. Open it up angle it, bring it in like that. So you're kind of tucking that corner in. Can you guys see me turning red? <laughs> That's the way it goes, I know it is. So there we go, those folds are in there like that. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to fold it this way, tuck this portion in. That was so smooth, Rachel. And you're going to fold it flat. Okay, so carefully flatten it out like this and press all of those creases in place with your bone folder. And this is the way it gets stored flat. It's a nice pretty little phone holder for that 14 year old nephew, niece, and it opens up like this, and now it holds your phone like that. So cool. So you can take this little guy or gal or whatever you wanna call it, and you can just tuck it right into the pocket of your card. Now I have another one in here. This one was done with the designer paper. So you don't have to worry about as much, you know, like you don't have to worry about the breakage or anything. I'm just gonna examine this. Yes, I did it right. I did it right. There it is. <laughs> so there we go. So there's another, um, another thing that you can do is just use your designer paper. But if you are gonna follow Easy Origami's um, way of doing it, just know that this little portion of the fold is even more complicated than the one I attempted to show you, which I think I succeeded on. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. You wanna be an origami lover in order to do it. So there is a fun little gift to add to your cards. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these all out so you can see them all at once. <laughs> I do have more, I'm not gonna show you all the phone holders here. I'll just, I'll show you the, the um, pink one, the one I just demonstrated. And we'll keep this one tucked in here like that. 
That way, in case anybody wants to take a screenshot of all of these at once, you certainly can. There's that. And we'll zoom out just a tad. Oops, lots of desk. There. Ta-da! I did it! That's a record. Three projects in one video. <laughs> I am going to be sharing some other cards that I've received from um, friends, customers, viewers, demonstrators. Um, I have a bunch of cards that are waiting off in the wings and I want to do a show and tell. So I'm going to go live soon. Um, I'm going to go live on my Facebook page. I just You just got to give me a few minutes to sign off of here and then I'm going to go over to my Facebook page and I'm going to do a live showing off those cards. So if you'd like to join me there, you certainly can. It is a page, so you don't have to worry about getting accepted into it. Um, and I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not done so before. And maybe this is the first time you're catching me um, sharing my fun ideas. Um, please subscribe. Um, give me the thumbs up if you would be so inclined also. And it is time for prizes. So I'm going to go ahead and bring these things out of the way and bring in the prizes now so you can see the options. Um, in fact, let's do last, last time's prize first. So we had, if I recall, yes, we had stamp set choices, right? I think it was stamp set choices from our last video. Um, moving some things out of the way on my computer so I can share with you the prize winner from last time. Now, I want to say last week, but it wasn't last week because we took a week off my um, kiddos. In Minnesota, we have what's called MEA break, um, Minnesota Educators Education Association. Educators, yeah, Education Association, and it's like a break, and it's when teachers can go and opt to find, um, like, get some training and, and um, do some educational classes and stuff like that. So the kids have off and a lot of families do fun things during MEA weekend. So um, that's what we were just kind of hanging out together as a family. But thank you for letting me take that week off. Um, so two weeks ago, you had like two weeks to, to, to get me your comments um, on the video from last time. And our winner out of 186 comments was Karen Andrusik. Karen, congratulations to you. What does Karen get, Rachel? Well, I believe, and again, it's been two weeks, so I might be wrong, but I believe she gets to pick from one of these stamp sets. Tell me if I'm wrong, though, you guys. I think that's what it was, because that's the thing that's sitting off to the side here. For this week, we have choices of fun embellishments. I have three packs of this bedazzling paper left over from Celebration. So if you did not get your hands on this beautiful, um, this, uh, it's like a, it's like a metallic-y kind of paper, um, you can get that or you can choose a pack of the snowflakes. So let's move over to the computer so I can see if Trisha has chosen the winners. I love it. Um, we have an emoji of hands being raised. I don't, I didn't catch the person's name who said that. Um, Trisha, who did we get? April Sunshine Works and Pammy. Congratulations. April Sunshine Works and Pammy. Congratulations to you. The first person to reach out to me via my email address. There it is. Um, we'll get first choice. So if you both want the snowflakes, you're gonna have to fight for it. And then we will have, of course, whatever's left over as the prize option for the um, winner that we draw from the after live comments. So if you're watching this after the live is done, you can go ahead and comment below and get entered into the prize drawing for that and be a lucky winner like Karen possibly in the future. So I think, I think that's it. We are ending October soon. Happy Halloween to those of you that celebrate. Um, happy trick-or-treating. Happy giving out candy. <laughs> happy whatever you're going to be doing. Our, our family is big into it. Um, then uh, next week is beginning of November. The first week of the month is typically when my all-star group does a blog hop. And so I'm going to be sharing with you a fun fold card that I made using the In Symmetry Suite from the annual catalog. And it's a card that we did with my team last night on our demonstrator Zoom event. So um, 
we'll have some some fun ideas shared with you next week because you'll be able to click on my blog but uh, my blog link and you'll be able to see lots of other ideas using that suite of products from some very very talented demonstrators from around the world in my all-star group yes congratulations to all of you who won prizes thank you to all of you who commented or just joined in and kind of sat in the background thank you for those of you that are watching afterwards and um, a big thank you to all of you who are joining in for the first time um, i'm going to let you go it is almost noon uh, my time and next week again uh, actually we're going to be we're going to be going yeah we'll do 11 a.m central time next week but the blog will go live later in the afternoon that day this blog hop or blog it's not a blog hop sorry this blog will go live in 15 minutes you'll be able to check out the the, the photos the measurements the pdf that's going to be downloadable supplies all that sort of thing if you do find any products that you enjoyed during this video you can go to my blog at stampyourartout.com you can click the shop button and purchase those products and if you are a demonstrator or you have another demonstrator please shop from yourself or them i love sharing and i am so glad you came so now i'd like you all to go and stamp your art out bye bye everyone